Hi guys, today's video is going to be a sort of more in-depth drugstore, sort of high street only base makeup for you. So you can see I've got quite a full eye on and my brows done already and I'm going to go through so step by step what I do on my base to be sort of happy with it if I was you know wanting quite a long lasting um, base look but I'm going to use all high street products so sort of drugstore high street whatever you call it so I'm going to get my hair tied back and we'll get straight on with it for you so I'm going to start with priming and I'm going to pre-warn you in fact these were not a good idea let's get those out so I talked about this product in, um, I think it was a drugstore haul that I did and it's the Bourgeois Sculpt Bronze Illuminator and it's quite similar to the Marc Jacobs uh, Dew You Coconut Drop, slightly different tone and it is, they call it a sun-kissed highlighter. Um, I actually tried it all over my face as a sort of primer glow giving level and Although when I put it on, you'll think, okay, Alice, that is a bit crazy. When you put your foundation over the top, it just seems to sit really nicely. And every time I do it, I get that many compliments from people on, your base looks amazing, what are you using? And the actual thing I always seem to be using is this. So I'm going to start with the Revlon Photo Ready Prime Anti-Shine. I'm not an oily person, but I do get slightly exposed pores around the nose. And this is quite similar in texture to the NARS one that I love. Um, they changed it from the little box one, which you've probably seen me use quite a lot if you've watched any of my um, videos previously, to a tube. And I don't mind the one in a tube, I do still love it, but I just really like being able to just sort of rub my finger in it and just push it into the pores where I know that I have slightly more visible pores and it just stops the makeup sitting in it. So for me, it's round the nose and then I do get just a little bit here and I'm gonna put a little bit over sort of the blemishes around my chin, which are just not going anywhere. Take a little bit more, just slightly higher. As I'm getting older, even though I feel that I use even better skincare and look after my skin more, my pores are slightly getting more visible than they used to. So let's go in with this bourgeois sculpt. As I said, it's gonna look crazy to start with. I use a pump and a half, so you know I don't go light on it. I really do slather a big layer of this crazy highlighter over my whole face. But bear with me. As you can see, it's starting to get quite a uh, orange look at that i mean i know it's mental i really do but under foundation just taking it down my neck slightly wipe a bit of that excess off now normally i would i do my eyes first but i wouldn't do my brows until after my base is done because i feel like i have to work around them uh but obviously this video is to just try and focus on the base so I did do my brows but it does mean that I'm going to have to be a bit more careful. Now as I say there is no way on this planet you could go out like that. I appreciate I look like a shiny orange disco ball but I really really do like the way that it looks under makeup. So now I'm going to go in with the uh, oh, very bourgeois heavy actually uh, for the base the bourgeois healthy mix serum foundation and I've got the color 52 so I'm going to put three pumps on the back of my hand I probably won't need all three um, but I like to have a lot to play with going in with my real techniques um, miracle complexion sponge and you'll see that this instantly covers up the orange crazy look I am taking it slightly under my eye as well obviously I will go in with concealer I always like to go in on the cheeks first because for me, I know obviously today I'll have to go everywhere because I've got this bright highlighter on, but um, I get redness on my cheeks and I don't really get much colour on my forehead. My forehead's quite even. Uh, so I, if I hadn't used this crazy highlighter, I don't need normally a lot of makeup on my forehead at all. I'm just going to use the other end with nothing on just to sort of try and blend away the hairline. 
obviously I don't want loads of product actually in my hairline. I said I wouldn't need all three pumps. I haven't left much left on the back of my hand there. I really like this foundation. I just think it, it gives a really sort of nice dewy look to the face. Even coverage, it never feels heavy. I don't find it ever sits in the skin. And I feel like at the end of the day, I still like the way that my makeup looks. And obviously it's hard to fit prices, so. What you can see is it's not super full coverage. So you can see probably that this little blemish here is still on show. So I will cover that up. So I'm just taking it back slightly over the ears as well to make sure that my ears aren't a totally different colour. So I'm having to just dab slightly more over the cheeks to cover my redness. As I say that's where I always get my redness. And what I try and do is sort of bounce it on the cheeks and not, not too hard because I don't want to take away the extra product. I want to actually leave that coverage there. Whereas for a lot of the rest of the face, I sort of bounce and wipe a little bit because I don't want it to be too thick. I want quite a light layer. So... That is the base on, I already think that just looks a million times better, really evened out the colour of my skin. But you can still see, obviously, dark under the eyes, little blemishes, I'm now very dewy all over, which we want to set down in certain places as well. So, next I'm going to go with my, um, this is all rubbed off, this is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in number 10. Now, I'm going to look today when I go, I don't know if they do a lighter colour, but this is actually quite dark. If, I don't know if you can see compared to, in fact, let me just try and show you a tiny blob of this. I'm just going to put, I'm going to put this over the top anyway. So I'll just put a tiny blob next to it, I say, if I can get any out of the tube. This is the um, Rimmel Match Perfection, which I absolutely love. And this is their number 10. And if you see the two colours, well, you can, oh, wow, we've taken it down my face. But look at those two colours next to each other, and they're both number 10. So I start with the darker colour, and then all over, so that it doesn't look crazily illuminated under the whole face. So I'm going to take that down, and then what I will do is go back in with the lighter shade, just to create the highlights. I'm just going to use the little end of my beauty blender. Again, what I would not normally have done is um, my eyeshadow under my eye. Um, I would have done that. Set, I would have done my concealer normally and then gone in with the shadow under the eye. But you can work carefully around it. I'm just going to take it down the nose a little bit and over just that very top part of the cheek, where again I do find that's where my redness peaks through. And I normally have enough left to just take it round the nose. Now some people, I do in particular, find that I get quite different pigmentation in sort of the corner of the eye as well. Not too much darkness, you know, there's a little bit of blueness which you would expect, but I just find that the colour often looks quite uneven, so I like to take my concealer right up there as well. Okay, layer one of concealer. Now I'm going to have to work quite hard as I'm going to boot, so I'm going to pick up another one of these. This is the Rimmel Match Perfection, and this is one of my favourite concealers. I just hate the applicator. If they could just put this concealer in a tube like this, it would just be bloody amazing. Because very quickly on, you find that you're really having to squeeze to get the excess product out. But I know that there's still loads in there, I can feel it, it just does not come out easily. So comes up through this brush which I find really unhygienic as well. I'm just going to put a little bit of the extra light on there and I'm going to take a little bit down the centre of the nose. I'm just going to put a little bit in the middle of the forehead and I'm not going to use that on my blemish because it's too light. 
So what you don't want to do when you've got a little blemish like this, if you go with something too light, it's just going to illuminate it and draw attention. So I'm going to take this one over the top. Hmm. I can't see really any others at the moment, quite fortunate. So I'm going to go in with my Real Techniques Expert Setting Brush. I'm just going to work that out very gently and I can feather it at the edges and then leave more of an actual coverage in the middle. So I don't know if you can see, but where the actual blemish, it's not a blemish actually, it's a scar from where I had a blemish, I'm actually not touching that part, I'm leaving the concealer, I'm just feathering around the edge. So I'll do the same here, I've put too much on, so I'm going to wipe some of it off. And then I'm just going to feather around the edges to blend it into the skin. but try to not actually touch where the redness is to leave the full coverage there. And then just gently tap over that so it's all meshed nicely into the skin. Again, I'm working my finger around the edge of the mark rather than actually touching the little mark itself. I need to blend my neck in more. I'm gonna take this brush again right up to the corner where I've got some dark blue marks and then just work that into the very darkest parts of the eye which for me is obviously very much the inner corner and then dab my finger. Now other people might find they get discoloration in different areas so I know some people have quite a lot of darkness towards the edge so focus that light a bit on wherever you feel you obviously have the most going to gently work that down the nose this is just to create that highlight on the nose I will go over with an actual highlighter for the middle of my head I want to use my beauty blender again to create just a bit of lightness in the center the thing is the skin if you were to look at your skin with no makeup on it isn't one color all over so as much as adding foundation is lovely because it evens it out if you don't create any form of sort of darkness and lightness anywhere, it isn't going to look very real uh, because your skin obviously does have different colours. So it's trying to bring it back with lightening products like concealers and highlighters and then also using your bronzer to create some of the shadows as well. So it gives a bit more of a three dimensional look to your face rather than it all just being one pale colour. Now, I'm just going to go straight in with my Maybelline Master Fix. It's a loose powder. And I'm going to set under the eyes. Tapping off the excess, I'm just going to set under the eyes so it doesn't crease. And I'm keeping my eyes really wide. I can get right in because I do get quite a deep crease under my eye. And I'm just taking an extra tiny bit just down and I'm pushing it into where my pores would be but obviously I've used the filler okay so only a tiny little bit I think I know baking's a thing and I do like that but for me it can get a little bit too cakey um, and just a light dusting just really helps set those under eyes without any creases in fact I look a little bit shiny here let's take it into the little C area in the nose as well. Okay, so gonna just create a tiny bit of a very subtle, easy peasy contour with the Collection Preci Precision Contouring Pen. And I'm just going to take where, if you suck in, it would be, and just draw a little line on the face. Now, you don't wanna bring it down too deep. That is not the idea, otherwise you're gonna really draw the face down. So I try and only take it about three quarters halfway down. And then I just use my beauty blender, just going to use the little end again to just blend that in really subtly. I think what you don't want is to create a big line on your face. Now, it's trying to get the line in the right place because obviously when you do blend it out, what you don't want to do is drag it down too low or again, it's not going to create a nice look to the face. Equally, you don't want it to be too high, um, otherwise it's just essentially blusher. So it's just trying to get it in that right place where your cheekbone would naturally lie. Okay, so that's those blended in. 
Then I'm going to take bronzer. This is the Revlon <laughs> Bronzilla in Bronzette. Just checking if Bronzette's the... Oh no, it's I think one's French and one's like, who knows? It says number 12, Bronzilla slash Bronzette. And I'm just using one of my Royal and Langnickel um, Duo Fibre Brushes. You only get a little thin bit here. So I'm going to take a load, dust a lot of it off on the back of my hand. And I'm just going to start on the sort of high points of the forehead, so around the outer perimeter where the sun would naturally catch and I'm going to stay away from obviously where I've highlighted in the middle. And then I'm going to take a little bit bronzer of a slightly wider area around where I've just contoured. Now obviously this is a much warmer shade versus the contour colour that I've just put on. So it's just really to add a bit more general bronze rather than a specific contour. Then I'm just going to take it along the jawline. Now I always like to sort of still blend it out a little bit because I think what you don't want is obviously just really patchy bronze where it's very clear you've applied it. But I try and concentrate it in that figure of three and then just sort of feather it out from there. Now I'm obviously taking this down my neck because at the moment I do not have any fake tan on and my neck therefore is a lot lighter. I will be fake tanning later which is why I've gone a bit darker with uh, my face makeup. So let me just, I'm just taking this right down my neck as you can see because what I don't want is it to not match up. That's a bit of a big giveaway. Lovely. And what you can see is you've still got the glow coming through even though we've now gone on top with quite a lot of sort of powder products. Again, I'm just going to take a little bit back onto the ears so that all the colours are matching up and just a tiny bit over the top lip. Now, sometimes I'll take a bit of my bronzer down either side of the nose to create a contour, but I do have quite a thin nose and I find even putting that concealer I can really see that it's already slimmed the nose out a lot. So for me to go again would make my nose look really quite sharp and pointed. So what I'm actually gonna do is just dust a little bit of the bronzer over the top, over the middle of the nose. Because for me, I don't need to create an even sharper one. It's sometimes nice for the right look, but what I'm after today. So last two I'm going to go in with highlighter. This is the Tanya Burr Champagne Sorbet Illuminating Powder and it is beautiful. So I'm just taking this on a Morphe M501 and I'm going to give it a really good dusting and take that on the high points. Oh, it's just so beautiful. I'm going to take a little bit here, so I haven't highlighted my brow bone, and I will take a bit further down my nose to create that highlight even more. I always wonder, because I, um, obviously I don't really see till I'm editing, whether the camera, oh, I can, I can personally, because my window's here, I can actually really see it hitting this side of my face, so I hope that the, um, Camera's picking it up for you. It is a beautiful glow. I'll try and move my face slowly so you can sort of see that beautiful champagne colour. I'm just taking it slightly above the brow and rounding a little C shape to connect it. And a little bit over Cupid's row. Tiniest bit where I've highlighted with concealer. So that's the highlighter. I really love highlighter. And then I'm going in with the world's tiniest little blusher. It's um, the Lasting Finish Soft Colour Blush in Pink Rose. It's tiny, it's really crappy packaging. The lid's broken off, but I really, really love the colour. It's sort of um it is a bit peach. What do they call it? Pink rose. I would say it is much more peachy, but it's very, very neutral toned. Really, you'll see it's not um, a super flush of colour to the skin. Now, again, with my blusher, I like to start on the apples, keep it quite high, 
and sort of take it back towards the edge of the face. I don't like to drag it too low down the face. You will obviously learn from um, the shape of your face what suits you um, you know where you're trying to thin out or fatten up you know if you've got a very slim face you might want to really focus on the apples to try and create that more fullness um, so it depends what works for you I then like to just take whatever's left just the excess and just dust it over the corners and over the center of the nose now I'm not talking like go back in and apply blusher I mean you can do what you want but for me I just think it helps add to the bronzer a bit of a matching tone and it helps just sort of like tie it all together so I like to just put a little bit there and a little bit over the centre of the nose. Obviously I don't have a lip on but I was just focusing on the base today so that would be sort of all the stages I would do. The only other thing I might do but I unfortunately don't have a high street um, one I can recommend would be to use a setting spray there and that will really add the whole to it. Um, Obviously, if you're an oilier skin, you could have powdered more of your face, but I only focused on sort of under the eyes um, and sort of just around the pores a little bit um, because I don't have an oily face, so for me, I don't need to powder everywhere. And yeah, that's my sort of uh, high street favourites at the moment for creating a really beautiful base. As I say, I have quite a lot of compliments on how my base looks when I'm using those products at the moment. Um, and I just think, you know, you don't have to pay a lot of money and go all high end. If you like high street, you can get some really great products from there. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And I'd love it if you subscribe down below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.